All right, so thank you for coming to this tutorial. This is going to be the first video that I'll be posting on the Watch OS uh, Swift UI you know, using the two together. And so what we're going to be creating here is this timer watch app where we can pick a time from a picker, click go, it moves us to a new view, so that's some navigation included. We're going to use the timer, um, the timer function on the actual phone to run through these many seconds. And then once we get to the end, it will show us done and we can go back. We can also kill it prematurely by clicking cancel or clicking the back button. Okay, they all serve the same purpose. So let's run through how to do that. So I'm going to start a new project, Command Shift N. I'm going to open the watch app, product name, I'm going to call it code tutorials underscore watch OS underscore uh, timer basics. Okay, and then copy all that. New folder. And then, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kill the left-hand navigation bar and the right-hand sidebar. And then thinking about the basic components that we see in here, what we see is we see a picker, a text, and this is a navigation link that's not a button in this given case. Okay, so I'm going to go add those three things. We got text, and we're going to add a picker. Okay, and then we're going to add a button. And then, of course, it's complaining because it's only looking for one item. Technically, those are three different items, but when I put them to one piece stack, those are now considered three different items. Okay. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to come up here and create two state variables. Okay, first state variable is going to be called second screen shown. It'll be equal to false. The next one will be called uh, timer val. And we'll set that. It's just going to be uh, an int. Actually, it's going to be equal to 5 at the get-go. Or 1. We'll make it 1. And then I'm going to make sure picker is using that as its bindable selection. So timer val. And then I'm going to make this equal to nothing for the label. OK. Needs to be capital S. There we go. That takes care of all those errors we just got right there. So I'm going to just make the, all the different options. Okay. So I'm going to do 5, 10. Let's just do up to 15. I'm going to need to keep going past that. 5, 10, and then 15. Okay. And then now inside this button, whenever we click on this button, ah, oh yes, this is not a button, it's a navigation link. Okay. So that's going to be a navigation link. And then we're going to use these right here. We're going to use uh, destination. We're going to use is active and label. So the destination will be, um, it's going to be a new view that we're going to create right here. So we're going to create a new struct. We're going to call this a second view, group type view. And it'll have a new var called body, a group type sum view. And inside, we'll just put a text for now. It'll say second view. And then the destination here will be that second view. Okay, so that just tells us where we're going next. Now, it's going to, right now, it's not asking for any initializer, but it will. And whether or not we're at this view is going to be based off of this state variable up here. So it'll be based off of second screen shown. Okay. And the label will say go. So screen reader is going to bring up the opinion errors aspect. Let's see what it does not like so far. Let's make sure it's probably a navigation link, so I'm going to save it and run it and see what we get. It is indeed a navigation link. So you can tell because it got further along. So I I've, I've did this earlier. Uh, we just need to do one small piece. Here's what we have so far, though. We have the two pieces. So to get the last piece, we just need to do that. I always forget these little things like that. So that should take care of that. It's just going to tell us that we need, that should be a squiggly bracket right there. Oh, it should be on the outside. There we go. OK. So now inside of the second view, we're going to need to add some state variables here as well. OK. And I'm actually going to make them match up. But the difference is, one of these will be binding. And the binding one is actually going to be this one, binding second screen shown, and it's going to be a bool. And what we're saying is, 
this is a one-way write. When I write, so when I go here, let's finish, let's fix that really quick. So it's just saying, when I go to second view, I need to feed it a couple things. Specifically, I need to tell it which binding bool I'm passing forward. So I'm telling you when I go to the second view, make sure you pass forward second screen show. Okay, so I'm gonna pass that. Second screen shown. So I'm saying the second screen shown in second view is going to be equal to the second screen shown in the first view. And this is binding, so when you see that dollar sign, what that means is that when I'm passing that forward, if it makes any changes here, it'll be passed backwards as well. That's what the binding is. Now, time now when I do the timer val one, I'm gonna feed it timer val. I am still gonna feed it timer val. This one is not binding, it's actually just a state variable. So what that means is that any changes that occur here stay here. Okay, but it will pass forward with the most updated version the minute I move to second view. But any changes in second view are not passed backwards, and that's why I use binding for one and state for the other. Okay, so now we have uh, all those components. So up here we want this to say, let's look at the example we're trying to replicate right here. So uh, I'm just going to run the old project so we can see the most, just so we can see the final product we were going for. So this is the one we're working on. Okay, don't get confused. We, we're working on code tutorials underscore watch OS underscore timer basics. So we're trying to make this say start timer for five seconds. So we'll make it say start timer for, and then use string interpolization right there for blank seconds. And so what will blank be? Blank will just be timer valve. And that's how we can insert the text inside of there in case you're new to Swift as a whole and you don't know what string interpolization is. It lets us put something that's not a string inside of a string. So if the text was expecting a string, we need to put something uh, other than a string inside of there, and that's what the string interpolation is for. So now when I click go, oh, just kidding, that's the, <laughs> that's the finished product. Okay, so we're almost there. Let's do this next piece here, okay? So when we get to second view right now, what we wanted to say is we wanted to say time remaining, blank seconds, and then we want the cancel button. So let's go ahead and be part of that. So we want a text. That's going to say time remaining. And then we want one that just has the timer val. And then another one that says okay, seconds. Okay. And then this one is going to be a font. Um, we'll say, we'll say font dot size. Okay, we'll give us this one. We'll say this one's going to be 14 large. And then. I'm actually going to do that for the one up here as well, timer four, start timer four. I'm going to do that up there as well. So I did it down here. Okay. Then last, I'll do the same thing for seconds. And then for the actual timer val, I'm going to make this one like 40. And then I need to put all of these texts here. They all need to put inside of a V stack. That's why we're getting this error. It's saying, hey, I'm looking for one view. And technically, we have three different texts. But when I put them in a V stack, it's technically one V stack view with three separate sub views that are text inside. So I've now saved that, and if I run it, what we'll find is we have something that moves forward, but doesn't actually show the timer counting down. So we're getting pretty close. And I click go, but nothing's changing. Okay. So underneath the, so when I click go, I want the cancel button, right? So I'm going to put a button. Okay. And this button. I'm going to make its action just be second screen shown equal to false, and that will let us unwrap the navigation, or unwind, not unwrap, unwind the navigation, that is technically the term. So that's going to say cancel. Okay, but what I'm going to say actually is, we'll say if timer val is greater than zero, meaning we haven't finished the timer yet, then show me everything we just created. But if it's not, why don't you just show me that last button with one key difference and that once it cancel, it'll just say done. Meaning that we technically already ran through everything. I'll give it a foreground color of dot green. Okay, and I'll give the cancel version of it the foreground color of red. Okay, I'm gonna re-indent everything, so make sure the spacing and, and everything looks nice on the screen. I'll click Control I. Gotta clean that up a good amount. Um, actually, it's given us one error, and I'll tell you why that is. It does not like when you put straight up logic like this as the technical return of what we're looking for. So I'm going to grab the button, okay, 
I'm going to get rid of that if then statement. Okay. And I will bring it back. But where I'm going to bring it now is actually inside of the VSAC. So I'll say, um, hmm, actually, I didn't even want to deal with that. So what we'll just do is we'll stick with this right here. Text cancel. Um, actually, I, I'm curious what I did to avoid that issue earlier. It was inside the VSTAC. So you know what? We will do it. All right. We'll just go ahead and do this. We'll say if timer val is greater than zero, then show me all that junk we just created. And if it's not, then just, that means we already ran through the timer. Show me the done button. Save it. Reindent everything so it looks cleaner. Okay. We're getting really close. Save it and run it. Getting close, click go, click, click cancel to go back. Okay, but it's not running through the timer yet. And, but to be honest, that's the easiest part. And it's a swift thing, it's not a swift UI thing. And I'm gonna just copy and paste this and we'll talk about it in four seconds, okay? So what I'll say is if, so you know, if we end up down this route, then the minute that I create this timer valve, I'm gonna do this on appear function. I'm gonna say on, dot on appear, on appear. So the minute that we show, the minute that I show this thing right here, do something. So on appear, I'm going to create a timer and I'm going to make a scheduled timer and it's going to say every one second, and this is a repeating thing, so it needs to happen over and over every one second. Okay. Then I'm going to, I got to say this timer in so I can reference the timer inside of this closure, but I'm actually not even going to use this. I can just say, I can just do that. And I'll say self dot timer val. So I'm saying if the value of the timer is greater than zero, meaning we haven't ran through the timer yet, subtract one from its value. Okay, and if it is, then don't do anything. So this is essentially saying if we haven't run through the timer, then subtract one. And if we have run through the timer, don't do anything, which makes plenty of sense because this right here, timer val, it's currently set to one, but it'll change according, actually I think I'm just gonna say int. Okay, it'll continue to change as we run through this actual scheduled timer. It'll also change its initial value based off of whatever we choose to pass forward from the picker. Okay, and if I save it and run it, we should have a finished product now. So now I can pick something like five seconds. Click go, four, three, two, one, done. Go back, and there's the whole timer, okay? So we just went through the very basics of um, Swift UI and watchOS together. You'll find that it's almost exactly like building an iPhone app. There's just little things that are different. But I would actually argue it's even easier than the tvOS because the tvOS, you still have to figure out how to interact with the screen without a touch screen, right? At least the watch still has a touch screen. So a lot of the basic things that you intuitively do, like pressing buttons, you don't really have to think about how you're going to code them because at least you still have that touch screen. So anyway. Uh, if you guys have anything else you would like to see with watchOS, please make sure to let me know. I kind of am looking for what you guys are interested in before I build something. Um, yeah, but please let me know, and please don't forget to subscribe. That's another thing. Um, I'm really happy that we're growing at the rate we're growing, and I really appreciate all of you guys' support. So thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.